protect me on my rocky road of vulnerable seeking. Keeper of the word, I do all the speaking. I defer to her, she sees the colors of truth. So I wanted to write a song about Georgia for a long time and the truth is I write songs about her just about every day, just little jingles when I'm taking her out or feeding her or anything and I realized that these songs that we write for our little non-human friends and maybe our human friends too are coming from this really pure place of inspiration as opposed to when you're a songwriter and you are really trying to write a song and come up with these good chords and melodies and lyrics and concepts sometimes you just have stuff come out of your mouth and it's usually kind of silly or ridiculous but often it's like well this is the catchiest stuff in a way because it's just so authentic and sincere and so I got that chorus first when I was just feeding her one day and just started randomly singing hungry little baby I'm gonna feed you and I decided that I could make that into a song and I wrote all these other lyrics that ended up in the verses being kind of jazzy and a really different style I think of the chorus as kind of something you'd play around a campfire, some kind of folk song. And so I've had to just kind of force the verse and the chorus together, especially with that little connecting di -di 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 -di, something that I got from old jazz too. Um, and I like forcing seemingly unrelated pieces of songs together into one song. There's a good history of that in my own songwriting and inspired by people like the Beatles who will just string together really seemingly unrelated or different meter. Once it becomes a well-known song, you can't imagine it any other way. And so I just started writing about my deep connection that I have with her, especially when her other human is out of town and it's just me and her together all the time. And I notice when I'd walk her, she'd always just be really alert and looking around and hearing things and smelling things. And if I didn't know how to feel about somebody, she would. She'd either really like them or maybe kind of growl under her breath and I often would think she's on to something there. Like sometimes her intuition is just more straightforward and developed than mine. And so I really um, respect her opinion <laughs> a lot of the time. She'll hear people coming close to the house long before I ever hear them. And shortly before I was writing this song about her, I was just thinking about how much I love her so much that it feels like all of the love of God and the universe and existence just flows through me as a vessel onto her. It feels that intense and like I'm just here to push that love out into the world onto somebody and maybe that's how people who have human children feel about them, but this is the closest I have to someone like that. And she has tricks that 
she came up with herself. We didn't even train her, but she'll just walk up to anyone if she hears some kind of crinkling bag of food from even a couple rooms away she'll run in and just stand up on two feet with her paws up and it's really cute and it works most of the time to get her a snack and when you have a dog person in your life or someone you're caring for it really is very grounding especially if you do a lot of spiritual work or you have a lot of just emotional struggles or something you're in your head a whole lot you won't feel like going outside but if you have someone who needs you to take them outside and take them for walks then it really gets you out of your head and into the world when you wouldn't have otherwise and you take a walk and you feel better and you feel connected to the earth and I always admire how connected she is to the ground and the plants and the trees and how much she always loves it and wants to go out into the world. And so I think of her as someone who really helps keep me grounded. And even when I am really feeling not grounded in my life, even if it's in the middle of the night or something, I'll just go and hold her or get close to her because she always has that energy of just like peaceful grounding into this solid state. And in my spiritual path, I've been working a lot with prayers and spells and rituals and different things that every once in a while I'll question and think, is this coming from the right place? Or am I putting my energy towards the right direction? Is this safe? Is this positive? And sometimes when I'm praying and I wonder that, I'll look over at her and see what her reaction is. And if she is, you know, just chill or not seeming to worry about it, or even kind of into it, like she'll come stand leaning against me, <laughs> I know that she's approving of it and maybe just protecting me to make sure that I don't let in any energies that I shouldn't. And so I really do defer to her for these underlying truths that might not be so visible to me, but I think she has this extra sense for it. She's like my spiritual mystic partner in that way. I've been studying a lot the mysticism of the Kabbalah, which comes from Jewish mysticism, but over the centuries has been influenced by a lot of different spiritual paths. And so I'm not necessarily studying it in a Jewish context, even though that is my ancestry on my dad's side, and I feel connected to it in a way through my bloodline or my ancestors past ways of praying and connecting to the divine and connecting to the earth but i just like to study it in this well-rounded way of all these different religions and spiritual paths meeting together in kabbalah they have the tree of life which has these different levels of spiritual and physically incarnate um realities and part of being in this physical earthly three-dimensional reality is called Malkuth and so that's why she's the Aidita Rod through Malkuth she's like my dog sled team helping me carry through this world that she's so good at connecting to and so she's done with this story apparently, so I guess I am too.